Yes, yes, this is Mr. Controversy, and this is the infamous three-point conversion station. Keep it locked. From coast to coast, re-representing all the dog town, this is the Brownstown USA Podcast, powered by the three-point conversion. The three-point conversion, where the fans' opinions, oh, they do matter. I'm Eric, and over there is LA. LA! What's going on, everybody? Brownstown USA, back in the saddle, and we... I definitely apologize and uh you know for taking such a long hiatus, but had to get some things together health wise and all of that, but glad to be back talking to you guys with my partner and uh we have a lot of big things to touch on, but we wanted to just come to you guys and do a little short blip, kind of touch on some things real quick, and then get out of here because we have some big things coming up. Um, combine is about to go down. Free agency is about to go down. So we will have a lot more to talk about starting next week, but couldn't let it go by too much longer, man, without talking about some big things that had happened while we were out and about handling business. So thank you again. Like I said, Brownstown USA, but Eric, yo, it's been a minute, man. It's glad to see you. Glad to hear you. Glad um, to- <laughs> I say the same, I'm, gotta say the same, my brother, man. I mean, really, it's been one hell of a time, I gotta say. Yes, yes, a lot of tragedy, I know, on both of our parts, and, you know, people passing away and health stuff, man. It's just been a crazy start to 2019, but we're gonna power through this, man, and, and get through it together. So, first thing I guess we wanted to uh, talk about, man, let's go ahead and knock out this whole Kareem Hunt situation. Um, we, you know, speaking of tragedies, speaking of just craziness, uh, that was something that really knocked me upside the head, and I was extremely surprised about. How how did how did you feel when you heard that the the Cleveland Browns signed Kareem Hunt? Part of me was excited. A lot of me was concerned. Look, from the football side of things. The guy could be an all-pro running back. And to have that, well, considering that we've been running the wishbone with Duke Johnson, Nick Chubb, and I guess Damian Hillard, that, I mean, just looking at that three-headed beast, when that 10- to 12-game suspension that's being speculated on is up, who's going to stop that running back core is the thing. Nobody. It's going to be the best in the NFL. But then you also have the moral side of this, which, let me be honest, it was hard to swallow when we saw this. I know you were in shock. I was in shock. Because nobody wants to say we signed someone that did something wrong on their team. Yeah, I can agree with that. Personally, Going through some things in my life and stuff like that, I I really can understand about giving somebody a second chance. So, therefore, I do not condone what he's done. I don't like it at all. But at the same time, I am not a person that can point a finger at somebody and tell them what they do or do not deserve as far as second, third, fourth, fifth chances at all. Um, And especially with the people that I know in my life personally, that have been given plenty of chances, 10, 12, 13, 14 chances. So I, the, the one thing I hated about this, Eric, is because with our fan base and just pretty much anything when it comes out there, when it comes to sports fan bases, is that the moral police always comes out when something like this happens. But yet these are the same people that I'm pretty sure if we were to peel back their layers and their life, we would find some pretty nasty stuff going on in their own life. Absolutely. So, so you know, the, these internet warriors, these internet moral warriors out there and stuff like that, I didn't like that part of the Kareem Hunt signing. The other thing about it that was kind of puzzling to me was that 
we just went through a lot of different peril when it came to, you know, uh, the Antonio Callaway situation a little bit, um, you know, the the whole insider trading thing. Uh, you know, we, we've kind of battled and weathered through a big, big year as far as when it came to different things off the field. So it kind of shocked me and surprised me a little bit to to bring something like that type of dynamic onto this team when it seemed like we have gotten rid or handled a lot of different situations, um, you know, bet, you know, for, for off the field stuff. But then I understood because like you said, Dorsey drafted the guy. So if anybody knows and sat with him and have talked to the kid and, and understand where he's coming from and would give him a second chance, it will be the guy that actually brought him into the NFL. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of people don't realize this, but the person that cut him was the new GM of the Kansas City Chiefs, who the thing is, he didn't have a connection with the players at all. Like, he didn't have that connection with Hunt the same way that Dorsey did. The same way that if something came out about Tyreek Hill, I can only imagine that he would probably get cut immediately as well because, well, he doesn't have that connection. John Dorsey's always been someone to give controversy a shot. He's always been the type of guy that would take that gamble. And let's be honest, so far it's paid off, so I can't fault him for it. Yeah. Now, from a football standpoint, this is where I was concerned, Eric, is that – and I'm, and in no way am I comparing these two players at all. But we seen Carlos Hyde, Nick Chubb, and Duke Johnson, and we've seen how – much of a monster Carlos was as far as gobbling up the carries. And then we've seen how it affected Nick Chubb because Nick Chubb is a guy that gets stronger as the game goes on as well by the increased amount of carries that he gets. Duke Johnson, we've seen him up and down, but he is a lightning in a, you know, lightning in a bottle. So, you know, all it does is take maybe one or two carries for him and he can just go the distance. Now, Kareem from what I've seen, and I'm not going to say that I've sat up there and watched every single game he's played, but he seems like a guy that needs a lot of carries as well. And this is my concern, and I'll ask this to you real quick before we move on. Mm -hmm. I, I really am concerned with being able to have three really, really good backs. I mean, we have three above average to elite running backs on our squad right now and um there's only one ball to go around absolutely but even with that I mean my personal thing with that is Hunt and Shaw were really the running backs as much as I want to say that Duke Johnson has that HB position most of the time he's been used as either a slot receiver or a uh what do you call it a um uh, un, not an option, like a screen ball player. So I think that in a sense I do agree, but at the same time I don't completely agree if that makes sense. I mean, I think that maybe it's going to be – I mean, we also don't know if Hunt will even stay on the team for that matter, though, because all it takes is one detail that might have gotten left out and he could be out on the street again. The fact of the matter is they're going to have to put harsh penalties on the kid. They're going to have to uh, make sure he's doing X, Y, Z if he ever wants to see the field right now in Cleveland. So it's going to be such a trial and tribulation that it's probably going to take him a while to get back. I wouldn't be surprised if he outlasted his contract here. Gotcha. Yeah, and that's a very good point. We don't even know if we'll ever see Cream Hunt and um, officially touch the field at all. So we'll definitely keep an eye out on that and, and continue to talk about it as anything else um, comes out to light. But let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to discuss the re-signing of a pivot, pivotal player on our team and also a little bit of the coaching staff. So you're listening to Brownstown USA, powered by the three-point conversion. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cat Williams, and you are listening to Three Point Conversion Radio.
And we are back. Brownstown, USA, powered by the three-point conversion. And, uh, yeah, the three-point conversion, man, where fans' opinions matter. Make sure you hop over to the threepointconversion.com. Check out a lot of good work over there. The writers are doing an awesome job. Nice website. Also, we have our man, um, Mr. Controversy, down there in Atlanta doing his thing, interviewing all types of players and stuff like that. So there's a lot of videos up. They're catching, you know, just just from Steph Curry to Trey Young to LeBron. I mean, there, there's a lot of exclusive content from the Three Point Conversion. So make sure you follow the Three Point Conversion um, on all your social media oh. outlets. At uh, we had, I just got some uh, breaking news, actually, from Mr. Controversy himself. Yeah, yeah. About Evander Holyfield coming on his show. Absolutely. Yeah. Just seen that as well. So that's also big. So like I said, yeah, and the show he's Eric's talking about is the three point conversion sports lounge. Uh, very good show every Saturday uh, from 10 to 12. You can catch it on Facebook live, YouTube and everywhere. So yeah, three P T C N V R S N make sure you follow the three point conversion. So getting back to it, Eric, we, need to talk about a big signing that happened and um, not big as far as maybe monetary, but big as far as what we've seen uh, from this, this young man, uh, Mr. Greg Robinson, we signed him back to a deal, a one year, I believe it was $7 million base uh, can be, he can earn up to 9 million in incentives, but really just a one year. Hey, tell me that this wasn't a fluke type deal, Uh, you know, um, and then we can discuss possibly mid season or maybe towards the end of the season. I think they would actually do a mid season if he came out still on fire, but you know, and then we'll give you that big hefty contract that you need. But Eric, the the biggest thing and the the thing I want to throw over to you is that Greg Robinson. Wow. I mean, if you look at his grade and his stats and what he's done, who would have thought? Who would have thought? Absolutely. I mean, I think you were the one that said it on Twitter during the week that we were laughed at for signing him. Like, we were ridiculed. We were called dumbasses for signing him. We were essentially looking like the old Browns for signing him. All of a sudden, he just comes out following the Desmond Harrison injury, and he just did not lose the job at all. That's what you want to see when you bring in a gamble player like that. Because if you remember, Detroit didn't let him see the field at all when he was there. St. Louis slash L.A. deemed him a bust. So he had a lot more to prove with not a lot of time to do it. He did it, and he was perhaps one of the best stories of last year. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I believe he only um, allowed one sack, no hits uh, during the games that he did start. I, I think he did what, – what, what did he start, eight eight games? Was it eight? I, believe so. I think it was um, – it happened right after Jackson got fired, I believe. So, I think seven. Okay. Um, and let's be honest. He, he got drafted first over um, – I mean, in the first round, uh, like you said, by the Rams – the schemes and stuff that they ran out there did not fit him whatsoever, but everybody wanted to call him a bust. I like it. Um, I think when we signed him or brought him on, I said I liked it then because I said, you know, why not? The line looked absolutely terrible at the time. And I said, hey, maybe we can catch lightning in the bottle there as well. So, you know, I like bringing him on. And, I, and I'm just laughing right now because I like to see comeback stories like this. I like to see – the people that called us dumb and called us, you know, idiots for signing him uh, to put their foot in their mouth. You know, the guy is only 26 years old. And for us to be able to get a left tackle, one of the most important positions on a football team that way, in that manner, you know, not drafting him first overall or something like that, or, you know, or signing one of these big free time um, free agents out there, uh, for, you know, a hundred million bucks or something like that, you know, uh, that's, that's absolutely huge, man. And then, like I said, as far as the person, I'm just glad that he was able, I love to see a comeback story. Absolutely. I mean, 
just going back to free agency alone last year, just think about the biggest name that was signed. That would be Nate Soldier from the Patriots to the Giants. And how much did we hear the Browns get second-guessed for dropping out of that race as quickly as they did? It was, right. on, it was on every forum, and then all of a sudden, Greg Robinson. Right. Right. And, and let's be honest here. Uh, this is to keep – because our line – all of our line is back. So, like, it's like, look, they did well. They're back. We don't have to worry about that. At the same time, looking at, at gentlemen like um, like Corbett and um, – and dang, I, he, his, his name slipped my mind. The, the gentleman, yeah, Harrison. Thank you. Uh, it doesn't mean that these guys are busts. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means the fact of what Dorsey said last year is that he wanted to get the best offensive lineman on the field. We need depth, okay? So, you know, at any point in time, any one of them guys can go down. And the good thing about Harrison and the the good thing about Corbett is that they're very versatile. So if anybody goes down on that line, we can plug and play them and, you know, to get us over the hump at least while anybody, unfortunately, if they do get injured, knocking on wood, we don't want them to get injured. But if somebody gets injured, we have death. So – I hate when people come out and they are always having these knee jerk reactions. Oh, this guy's a bust. What did you draft him for then? And that, you know, all that dude, we need death. Okay. We need to be able to have people at certain positions to be able to plug in in case things happen because things do happen during the course of the season. Absolutely. Plus you don't know what the uh, situations are going to be. I mean, keep in mind, JC Treader is a free agent after this season. And then Kevin's getting up there in age. I hate to say it. But he's starting to get up there. So in the near future, we could be seeing Corbett as a starter. We could be seeing a lot of changes coming. But for right now, let's at least keep the line that we have and see what happens from here. Absolutely. Now let's transition over to the coaching staff. Um, I mean, by now, unless you've been living under a rock, we already know the coaching staff and, you know, the offense coordinator, defensive coordinator, all of that has been filled. Uh, we didn't have a chance to talk as much about it. I know we talked about the Freddie Kitchens hire, but I just wanted to get your overall opinion really quickly uh, before we go to break about the rest of the staff that was able to be formed around Freddie Kitchens. How do you feel about it? I like the staff because the thing is, given the vast differences in talents, look, One of the problems I had last year was the defense was hard to watch. Like, yeah, they had all the turnovers, and those are pretty and all. Turnovers aren't always effective, though. So to see someone that's going to come in and work on the secondary with zones and stuff like that, brilliant. I like the idea of a quarterback coach coming in to essentially work on the offensive side. Look, I'm going to be honest. Freddie Kitchens was a great offensive coordinator, but you can only run the same things as much and as much as possible. Getting someone that knows how to work with the spread is definitely going to be a plus. And do I and alone Amos Jones? <laughs> yeah, I knew you. Know I knew he was going to bring that up and drop the mic on that. Uh, to be honest with you, I love the uh, coaching staff as well. The only thing that was a little bit of a head scratcher for me was our special teams hire. Not that I'm not saying Amos Jones shouldn't have been gone because we've been preaching that for the longest, but just the guy that they brought in with some of his off the field issues, or I guess it happened on the field or off the field. I, I can't remember the comments or whatever, but uh, they, there was some scrutiny a little bit there by bringing him in. But as far as what job he can do, uh, he's what, miles better than um, Amos Jones. So uh, now that that's all died down and the, and the dust is settled, I think we have a very, very strong coaching staff around Freddie Kitchens. And we knew with him being a new head coach, it was going to depend on who was around him. You know, just like out in in, in L.A., you know, Sean McVay wouldn't be nowhere without the the people that was around him as well. Um, so they did a good job surrounding him too. And I think the Browns did the same thing for Freddie Kitchens. So 
definitely very, very excited about this upcoming year and just what is cooked up, man, when it comes to the defensive side of the ball since we got a new D.C. And, um, and you know, seeing the O.C. and Freddie work together uh, to, to, you know, bring in that air raid type offense, I mean, it should be pretty exciting. So we're going to take a quick break. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk about some uh, some some possible pending free agents that we have and if we should keep them here or let them walk and all that kind of good stuff. So this is Brownstown USA, powered by the three-point conversion. We will be right back. Hi, I'm Rob Brazil, and I listen to the three-point conversion radio. And we are back, Brownstown, USA, and I'm L.A., and across from me is my main man, Eric, and make sure you follow Brownstown, USA. You know, we have an f- exclusive Facebook group that you are more than welcome to join as long as you answer those freaking questions correctly. Uh, not too hard, just want to test your general Browns knowledge. Uh, also, we are on Instagram at Brownstown, USA as well, putting up exclusive content, videos, pictures, and all kinds of other good stuff. And then also we are on Twitter, uh, keeping you updated with the latest Browns news as well at Brownstown USA. So make sure you give us a follow. And also, too, thanks for listening. Make sure you subscribe to us. Give us a review, five stars, or however you feel about us. Give us the feedback, and we will do our best to do better or to keep it going the same way that you like it. So thanks again for subscribing and listening to us. We are on iTunes and all your major podcasting networks as well. So, Eric, we talked about some of the big free agent signings that we just had. Um, Of course, you know, free agency is coming up, and, man, we're going to be in all kinds of rumors, I already know, because we have a bunch of cap room, and we have an aggressive GM as well. So I know we're going to be in all kinds of rumors for everybody out there pretty much. But we have a couple of free agents on our own roster, uh, that has uh, been talked about quite a bit already. And that is our wide receiver group between Rashard Perryman and Rashard Higgins. Now, Perryman is an actual free agent, uh, and, but Higgins, uh, interestingly enough, is a restricted free agent. So how do you see this playing out for our two wide receivers? What do you want to happen? What have you heard? Let's Let's discuss. Well, personally, I just want to say I would like to see both of them resign. The reality is, though, I think Higgins is going to be coming back. I'm not so positive with Perriman, and there's one major reason for that. It's his agent. Look, not to be that guy, because we all know Brashard Perriman was another one of your favorite comeback stories, but Drew Rosenhaus has never been helpful to Cleveland at all like probably the most obvious example is that of one of his past clients Terrell Pryor in which he and Pryor said he wanted to come back he should have come back he didn't come back instead he decided to get greedy try to get the money after saying that he would even try for and give a hometown discount didn't happen and well for lack of a better word, the fact of the matter is, I like Perriman. I just see another Terrell Pryor in this regard, though. And it's unfortunate, but it's what's going to happen. As for uh, Higgins, I think he's going to come back, but I think the Browns are going to ha- actually match an offer sheet, to be honest. Like, I think they're going to let him do it and at least see – what they can get because, if I recall, restricted free agents get a compensatory pick, if I remember correctly, if they get signed. So maybe uh, if something happens, maybe they do let him go. I doubt it just because of his connection with Baker. Yeah, as far as Perryman goes, 
I definitely want to see the guy back. He seemed very humble, um, you know, when he talked as far as being able to get another chance after having such a terrible time in Baltimore. Um, the agent is a big deal, but at the same time, I see Perryman being a little bit different of a player than Terrell Pryor. Terrell, to me, came off as having a chip on his shoulder. He seemed really, really arrogant, especially after coming from, you know, Ohio State and being such a big name in the state of Ohio uh, because of that Ohio State connection. So it seemed like he, he he had a big head at the time, and he allowed his agent to influence him. I, I don't think Perriman, after seeing something like that happen, I think Perriman might actually – change you know the beat a little bit because he seems like a little bit more of a down-to-earth kind of dude and I don't think he'll allow it to get to him uh like how you know it happened with Terrell Pryor uh it will be very interesting to see what kind of contract comes from it what they do offer him if they try to offer him maybe a one-year prove-it deal again just kind of like how they did Robinson which is something I would like to see just because yeah he did good in his last final games but at the same time you know, a lot of different things happened in those last final games. So, you know, it, it was a sample size, but I mean, to get a full off season with them, training camp, all of that, definitely would like to see if he could even just stick on the roster, you know, past training camp. Um, another big thing that's influencing my opinion on Perryman is the fact that they signed Jalen Strong, uh, which is like a wide receiver to me that is kind of similar to Perryman as far as when it comes to build and speed. Uh, so, so, it's going to be kind of interesting to see about that one. Now with Higgins, really quickly, uh, Higgins, love him. Uh, he's grinded. He's then been through the, the the Coleman era and all the different wide receivers that have been here uh, that are not here any longer. Uh, but he's put his head down. He's worked. I mean, he was like, what, fourth or fifth on the depth chart and worked his butt off to get on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, so very, very good story. Seems like a really, really good guy. I think I do agree with you, though, that somebody will offer him something. Now, there's a lot of teams out there that are wide receiver needy right now. So this is the one that kind of concerns me because I can see a dumb team coming out of nowhere and just offering him like a monster offer. And the Browns just say, you know what, look, we love you, but we can't match that, you know, and, and letting him go um, because of the fact that, the the wide receiver market for wide re, um free agents is not that good this year. Uh however, there there is some pretty intriguing wide receiver prospects out there in in the draft. So um this one can go either way as well, Eric. Mm hmm So let's see. Well, look, so guys, we have some big shows coming up. Uh, we're going to try to secure some guests down, too, because I think that we definitely need to bring some people on to talk about free agency, uh, the draft that's coming up, combine. I mean, this is where it gets very, very interesting before it goes dead again in the NFL. <laughs> so um, make sure you keep and, and, and just stick with us. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Keep continuing to listen to us. Thank you so much for the support. Really, really feels good to be back. And um, I, I can't wait, Eric. This is this is the exciting time in the NFL offseason, man. This is the bread and butter here before it goes back dead again. Um, so, oh, and by the way, guys, Johnny Menzel just got cut by uh, his CFL team, too. Just wanted to throw a little shade out there. Violating, violating his contract uh, agreement details or whatever he put in there. So probably some drugs or something like that. Not going to speculate, not yet. We'll, we'll have some more details on that soon. But, yeah. So, Johnny Manziel cut. Everything's looking good here. And, guys, guys, think about it. This is the first draft that we go into and not have to worry about talking about a freaking quarterback. I mean, just let that settle on your mind. And then also, too, I put this on a, a forum, Eric. I said, man, I think this draft is going to be so boring for us Browns fans because we are so used to being having picks like right away that we're gonna have to sit there and actually wait this year man for a pick and I mean I guess I'm gonna have to get some some buffalo chicken dip together or something and man you know because we gonna just be sitting there waiting for a long time absolutely the crazy thing about all this is imagine that draft party the last time we were this 
late in the draft, we took Corey Coleman, if I remember correctly. I mean, we're going to be saying that draft party is going to be what's on? Yes, there's going to be a lot of drunk Browns fans by the time we uh, draft. <laughs> Finally, in the first round, they're going to be drunk already. So, guys, <laughs> enjoy responsibly. Love you guys, man. This is Browns Town USA. Powered by the three-point conversion, we will see you guys next week for our special Combine episode. Peace!